Namathu Ratana Tayasa. May I pay homage to Triple Zem, the Buddha, Dhamma, and the Sangha. My respect goes to my parents and my teachers. Hello, good evening, everyone. So today is a Monday, uh, the 8th of um, March. 2021 and this is a Chan Sujan from Warapunya Meditation Center, Aberdeen, Scotland. I hope you're all keeping well and happy. Hello, good evening Margaret. How was your first ride? After a long time, I hope that you enjoyed your ride. Yeah, in this little bit of a gloomy day, but I hope you enjoyed uh, your ride. Meanwhile, uh, today I have a very sad news uh, that um, one of our a close member and who had been a very supportive throughout the time and suddenly he had a, a kind of a stroke and uh, last night and died this morning. So I would like to uh, just uh, dedicate tonight's talk and a reflection, uh, reflecting him uh, about his uh, life. Uh, hello Yvonne, hello Margaret. Okay, with best of luck, uh, enjoy your uh, another ride. So he is, uh, his name is uh, Dave McFarlane and he was uh, um, about 83 and uh, he was a uh, humanist and also practicing Buddhism. I remember when I came to Aberdeen for the first time in 2011 in summer, we established the center, a Thai Buddharam temple in Aberdeen, in Hamilton Place. And uh, <clears throat> he normally used to come quietly and used to leave things uh, that I normally ask him to do something. Prior to that, before the establishment of a Thai Buddharam temple, which is now in Hazel Head, the Mrs. Ora Thai, who used to be an owner of a Ban Thai restaurant, she is still here in Aberdeen, she organized the fundraising to establish the center, Buddhist center in Aberdeen, about 2007-2008. And having heard this news and read in the journal, in a, a local newspaper, that cutting is still with me, um, this man, Dave McFarlane, visited her and discussed the possibilities of establishment of a Buddhist center in Aberdeen. But again, it took a couple of years and then finally in 2011 managed to establish the Buddhist center. And once the Buddhist center was established, ever since he used to visit quite often and then he used to uh, leave uh, things at the door or at the um, uh, stairs and leaves and he never tried to <coughs> sorry and he never tried to you know disturb whenever there is a, a chanting or meditation going on and later on we become a, a friend and um, we studied at Tipitaka studies and gradually he began to join with us. And eventually, a couple of months later, he came up with the few volumes of a Tipitaka in English version that he 
bought and read in the past. And that was the start of having a good conversation. And I began to read the discourses and read out and discussed on that discourses. And ever since we become a good friends, and they're never uh, far away. And uh, all the time, whenever uh, I need some support in regards to the papers and in regards to the language editing, he was always there to help me. Even after the establishment of this meditation center, he visited a couple of times, and not a couple, many times, and uh, guiding and, uh, and and advising in different aspects of the uh, running the center and the first time when we bought this place here in west hill he was so happy to see and he traveled from colt to city from city to west hill and then walked from west hill shopping mall shopping center to the center just to look around and he was so happy uh, and he said to me that it is so good to have a center away from the city. It's quite a secluded and conducive for the practice of a meditation. And ever since he always, you know, often visits. And then there was an occasion when her, when his wife, who had a dementia severely uh, got ill and uh, um, he brought her to plant a tree in our field and after she planted that tree a week later she passed away and I still remember after her passing away he came up and again walked through the woodlands and that was a beautiful, you know, <clears throat> beautiful moment to see how he was contemplating as he walked through the woods in our uh, uh, woodland. Contemplating, probably he was contemplating all those memories that he had with his wife at that time. And it was lovely. Uh -huh. And this morning when I heard this news, which was about you know, 9 o'clock, but I was teaching, so I didn't respond to the calls. And then after 10 o'clock, after the teachings, I responded the call and realized that he is dead. He passed away. And suddenly I feel very sad. I don't know why. I don't know what's happened. I have seen so many people died and I have uh, you know, seen so many uh, people in the hospitals dead and I even by myself conducted so many funerals. I do not feel that feeling when I heard he passed away. Somehow, without knowing, my eyes were full of tears and it was just so sad. I couldn't explain. Yeah? I couldn't explain what was going on in me. And all I could I could think of at that time was to light a candle on behalf of him in front of the Buddha and light few incenses dedicating his peaceful departure. Further on, as I remember his contemplative walking along the th uh, uh, along the way on the woodland it reminded the tree that he planted along with his wife so i went and looked at that tree i'm not sure whether the same tree or the different tree because after that tree many trees been planted but i guess that was the one so I just went and looked at that tree and chanted a blessing for the good departure. And as I came back and still there was a feeling of you know, wanting to go and see in his house. 
wanting to go and speak to the family members. And as, as I said, you know, I have been looking after like the bird, uh, bird's mother, bird, him, bird himself, and uh, <clears throat> there's a Thai ladies, uh, those who were severely ill in a hospital and in a care home. You know, these people I have looked after by myself, you know, along with other helps. Um, like Bert, I have vi I visited almost every day before his death. His mother, I visited every day before his death in a hospital, in a house. Um, and even Bert's death, <clears throat> it was very sad to me, but it didn't happen like a tears coming out. And meanwhile, I even didn't have an opportunity to attend the funeral. And I do know that he didn't have any family members and his friends are, uh, are conducting this funeral. And I had requested uh, to let me know is there any funeral going on so that I could join or I could have a small ceremony at the center. But somehow I wasn't informed. But anyway, my part is done and I have done well from my part. So that again didn't brought to me any tears and the same with the Thai people those who have you know, again she was like a completely discarded and I was uh, like a, a next to kin and caring until uh, uh, her uh, family members come forward to take her responsibilities and didn't have any sense of uh, sadness at all because I felt like I have done my best to look after them and they are in a good, I hope they are in a good state. But this Dave McFarlan, I didn't look after him, you know, and, um, and haven't seen him for a, a whole year during this pandemic. But we did have a, a Zoom meetings, a Zoom conversation, an email conversation, even the phone conversation sometimes. We did have... But somehow I felt I am very connected with his honesty, his faith, you know. And he told me so several stories that uh, in the past there was no Buddhist groups in Aberdeen. And uh, he was also a humanist. He said that he used to travel down to Edinburgh to attend the Buddhist meetings and Buddhist meditation groups. And he told me that quite often uh, they read the Buddhist scriptures and also practicing Buddhist meditation, but it's purely based on someone who had been to the temples in Asia or in other parts of the country and then attended a few bits of a meditation and known few bits of ex uh, uh, experiences and coming to share. And pretty much it was confused, uh, but it was still better than none, he said. And when we have uh, centers here in Aberdeen, he said that it's much, much different than uh, what he learned in those days in Edinburgh. And eventually later on when he uh, gained his more confidence in the practice, he practiced the meditation. And I remember a few years ago, he had a problem with his walkings because he's 80s now. So a few years ago, he, was, he had trouble with walking. So he had to uh, hold the stick whenever, wherever he goes. And he was introduced to practice of a walking meditation. Yeah? And, uh, you know, I, uh, again, you know, I used to visit him quite often and I sat down and had a chat you know, uh, discussing on Buddhist meditation and his experience of a meditation uh, and like that. And I always used to give him uh, some tips and uh, practices. And one one day he mentioned that he, he was visiting Thailand and in Thailand he managed to do a proper walking meditation. And after the meditation, he gets some kind of uh, uh, encouragement or some kind of energies that he could mindfully walk and he, doesn't, he didn't need to have any support, any sticks. 
And I've, ever since, whenever he is walking, he's walking with a very mindful, and as a result, he didn't have to have the sticks. He was kind of a very energetic and filled okay. And even last year, uh, in the summertime, I had a, a chat with him. And he broke the, uh, his knee uh, because he was kneeling down and working in the, in the garden, yeah? like that. So he normally used to say that the practice of a meditation had helped him to gain his energy and then walk properly like no trouble. So that's why in Aberdeen I would say that he was the first Buddhist that I come across and a really faithful and, and a real practitioner. And often when I need some supports, I just need to text him and email him and he's happy there and read, read all my script uh, and send it to me within a few days. Uh, and even the chanting book that we are having nowadays, because uh, in the, the last year, I think beginning of the last year, uh, we were, our printer ran out of ink, and uh, this printing of uh, a chanting book uh, uh, not, uh, requires quite a number of uh, you know, uh, inks and uh, editing, and he was very happy to do it for us. And he simply said, just text him uh, you know, and just email him and he will print it out. And then he, I emailed him and very next day he uh, texted me saying that how many copies do I want? Uh, and so he was so forward helping at all the time. And immediately, you know, and went to his home and sat down and uh, discussed and uh, as the the printer was printing this chanting book, we had a lovely discussions on Buddhism and Buddhist practices. Um, and he was so humble and gentle. So probably that was the uh, reason that I had uh, this uh, a sadness when I hear uh, he passed away. Maybe the bond that I have developed over this uh, 10 years time of knowing him, despite of uh, not a close uh, friend or relatives, but uh, working together for the same goal. And whenever I can't attend any religious uh, meetings in Aberdeen or even the inner city council, uh, and he used to uh, attend those meetings and informs informed me and he even used to be a chaplain in the Aberdeen uh, uh, hospital uh, and through him uh, quite often I get some information about the chaplain and he always encourages me to be chaplain in different places that help that would help people those who are really needing uh, the support from the Buddhist perspective and in a way, he was right. He was right. And with his encouragement, I would say, and his uh, working uh, in a different organization uh, pretty much helped me uh, to uh, get more insight. And uh, now, as we know, uh, from this practice of a meditation has helped so many people. Yes, uh, Thank you, Yvonne. So probably we will plant a one tree uh, in, uh, in his name, in his memory, in our woodland. So that's why, you know, it was something that I felt very uh, uh, sad. So and um, after the after uh, after lunch, you know, we had a chat, and I was always thinking that I should go. Uh, and uh, with Ajahn Pira, we decided to go to his house. Uh, about four o'clock, we went out and bought a card and uh, a bunch of uh, flour and went down to see uh, his family. And it was quite a you know, bit of a surprise. You know, when we arrived at, uh, in, in front of the house, everything was dark, everything, not, no lights on. And I thought that we thought that oh nobody will be there, and we decided just to go in, 
and uh, knock the door if anybody is there then we will be lucky if no one there then we will just put the car through the door and then leave a flower at the door and it was really nice that his wife uh, her, uh, Koi and uh, her daughter was at home and it was lucky and we had a, a good uh, laugh and uh, not laugh a good, a good talk you know, and exchange the uh, uh, discussion and uh, memories about him uh, memories about uh, how we come across and how we met uh, and also uh, I also encourage her because you know she uh, just came to um, uh, be here not that long you know, I encouraged her that if there is anything that uh, our center and me myself personally could help him you know, I'm very happy to do so and again even the funeral time I do understand that because of this COVID-19 there is a restrictions you know and um, yeah, there's a limited numbers are allowed although you know we will not be able to attend I would be pretty happy to you know have a small our own a small service on the day at the center like that so that's why it is a, a, a moment that uh, you know we need to re I, I personally would like to reflect his life and uh, celebrate how humble and how good he was and throughout his life you know, after his wife died he dedicated himself working uh, uh, to the Buddhism and practice of Buddhism and spreading Buddhism and he was helping in a Thai Buddharam temple it was Hazel Head temple quite a well uh, in a different ways and even uh, practicing and helping monks and helping people those who are non Thai speakers visiting in the temple and everybody knows him uh, I would say that all the Thai people know him uh, uh, and I would say that the mummy, the Arathai, uh, when she began his thought to establishing a center, he is the first Abadonian who come forward saying that he would help. And he stick with his words and he helped both temples here and in Hazelhead continuously and uh, even in his, up, up to his last breath. And he even visited so many Buddhist temples and helping in different Buddhist temples um, and most importantly the practice so I in a way uh, feel very lucky to have uh, come across with him and uh, got support from him but as the Buddha said you know that uh, uh, maranang anatito, we are subject to death we haven't uh, come uh, and uh, overcome uh, from this death and again uh, further on a Buddha said that uh, separation from the loved one brings suffering I know that you know uh, I even I am a Buddhist monk and practicing in this way somehow I still do have a feelings you know, and feelings to those who are connected to me feelings to those who have helped me feelings to those who have supported so many works in the society and in the community so I do feel very uh, touched here by his support and work and meanwhile it is quite sad to know he's passed away so this is uh, the, uh, the story that I would like to share with you all uh, that um, you know, a person that I have known and a person who has been supporting the center uh, in, in many ways in every ways and suddenly now he passed away peacefully at the age of 83 years old so my sympathy goes to all the family members and also relatives those who are very, you know, suffering from losing him sudden sudden passed away so yeah, I hope that they will gain courage and carry on from uh, uh, what he left so meanwhile uh, and again you know I would like to inform you all that if you want me to visit in every ways every t any ways I am pretty happy to go and talk to you
particularly if you are stuck and uh, not able to go anywhere or just you know give me your number and if you want me to contact i am pretty happy and meanwhile whenever you know if you need someone to talk just let me know okay so i end here with this saying that be safe take care and be mindful so thank you i end here for tonight's reflection thank you very much and may you all be well and happy in a few moments time we're going to have evening chanting and guided meditation so we'll see you may the buddha dhamma sangha bless you Satu.